Welcome to the final day of the second OECD International Conference on AI and Work, Innovation, Productivity, and Skills, AI WIPs. My name is Andrew Wyckoff. I'm the Director of Science, Technology, and Innovation at the OECD. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this second day forum and Nicholas Nico Miai of the Future Society. Now, in partnership with the OEC's Public Affairs and Communications Directorate, we've now added another important stakeholder to our work on AI. That's the OECD's Global Parliamentary Network on AI, where we have the honor of being joined by Eva Kelly, Vice President of the European Parliament. Now, I will ask each to speak in the reverse order of my introduction today and to briefly talk about the future trajectory of the AI as they see it, as well as the policy priorities for ensuring that it is the AI future we all want. In the spirit of stakeholder engagement, we want to ensure that all our parties have a voice. Uh, all our parties have, have a voice, so I ask the speakers to please keep to time. With that, it's my pleasure to give the floor to Vice President Kelly, Eva. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Andrew, for your uh, kind words and introduction. And uh, of course, Landon Gooch, because um, I've been working with him uh, since actually I joined the European Parliament. And uh, now we, we did uh, tax, we did blockchain, and now we are, I think, into the most transformative technology, artificial intelligence. Um, the way that we are moving, especially under the light of the pandemic, I think it's a uh, um, basically exponential, similar to how AI is developing. We are trying immediately to put some uh, order in this chaos, some rules, uh, and uh, complete the puzzle for regulation of the digital economy. AI Act is now uh, reaching the European Parliament. Um, just to explain how we are collaborating with OECD, and for me it has been uh, historical, actually, that we managed to join forces in this parliamentary network um, to agree on the common ethical framework because we need to um, expand and extend our influence beyond the European uh, borders at least because this is a cross-border technology. We cannot, it cannot be stopped by borders. Um, and with Nicholas, uh, we have uh, already started an annual event, the Athens AI Roundtable on uh, new technologies. I believe we can, in the end, merge and keep exploring the different aspects and the ways that AI is transforming our economy. Um, I have my daughter around, so she wants to intervene. I mean, because it's about her future, actually, although uh, we have AI already here. Um, uh, I would like uh, just to, um, to say that for, for us, uh, uh, the AI Act is just the initial text now. Uh, we will see how it's going to change in at least um, three, four months with the opinion of all the committees of the European Parliament coming together. Uh, we have heard several numbers around AI and how it's changing and uh, how it's evaluated. Um, now we hear about 15 trillion basically a uh, dollars this means um, everything is will be transformed so um, I, I think we're going to have a very interesting discussion soon the three main concerns in the European Parliament is what are the high-risk applications because we know what's going to be banned um, and how we're going to monitor the life cycle of the AI systems because AI systems are developing and they are reaching new um, a new extents and we understand how the technology is developing. We have to be very um, uh, active and flexible there. And uh, of course, the um, the ethical framework, if we can manage to have by design also common standards uh, because it's, it's becoming very geopolitical and, and this is also a historical day. Uh, we've seen, uh, I think, the first war in Europe um, almost uh, of the last 100 years. So um, thank you for having me. I'm happy to, to discuss with you further. Thank you, Eva, and thank you, thank you for joining us in what we know must be a very busy day for, for you. Um, it's a very big conversation. We need to have it in relationship to AI. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you. I, I see Eva has her hand up. I also wanted to ask her about uh, Carolyn's idea of having a bot make AI policy, but um, Eva, please. Thank you, Andrew. Just to, to say that 
uh, we are expecting now a new legislative uh, file uh, on uh, uh, the, it's called the Data Act. Basically, it's going to be the GDPR of non-personal, non-sensitive data. So this means uh, um, this discussion will have to take place at a different uh, context. So AI Act is about the things I basically mentioned, is the approach of the high-risk, low-risk, what is banned, what is, uh, what is not, and um, a biometric surveillance. It's not allowed in public spaces, but um, uh, only for enforcement. You can use specific AI applications, uh, but for law enforcement, but still I agree that for workers, for example, for the private sector, it's not mentioned, it's going to enter the text, I can bet on that because now, it's, as I said, reached the European Parliament, so we're going to have a full discussion on uh, what is allowed. We've seen, unfortunately, businesses already using AI not to keep workers safe, but for huge surveillance of what they act and to measure their productivity, uh, which causes just extra, extra stress and unfair rules, and this is not acceptable in Europe. Um, we said that the, the principles now that we have on the table is we have a, a, a letter that we will have a declaration from the European Parliament on digital rights and principles to ensure that the spirit of everything we do will uh, follow the same line. Uh, so it's going to be human-centric and it's going to be by law, it's going to be trusted. Um, we have also established the TTC, its dialogues in several different aspects of the technology and trade. This is a country where, where we try to rebuild again the bridges with US because again this is a, a, a technology that goes beyond borders for like-minded countries we need to be very strong. One final example, we had the Pegasus um, application that not only it has violated our privacy but it's actually been bought by governments and even the FBI. So we need to be very firm on what we want to protect because I'm not sure exactly that we can control AI if we don't prepare now the framework of what is acceptable and what is not and to ensure that it's going to develop the, um, uh, let's say the, the framework in terms of like what is high risk and what's not, not with um, uh, terms of uh, quantity or like how many workers are there but also how many people can be impacted and if it would be harmful. So I think this is a matrix we need to solve and your input is really valuable. I've been following also the work of OECD as I said and we are collaborating. So um, uh, the, the proposal of uh, Nicolas for the technical benchmarking I think it's really essential. Um, so at least there is awareness and with the pandemic we realize this technology is here already for like at least 20 years. We are outsourcing our trust to the Google Maps to see the traffic and not to our knowledge of the shortest road to get to our friends. So um, we need to act fast and thank you for, for having me in this discussion.